I try, if possible, to get across to the ship just to have a little something, you know, to give me a bit of Dutch courage. And a uh, very strange thing happened when I was over there earlier this evening. I was just leaning against the corner of the bar with my uh, pint of red barrel, and uh, in came five pigs. Um, quite respectably turned out they were, varied in size from about this height down to a little tiny chap. Anyway, the barman was a bit surprised to see them, but he said to the first pig, largest one, well, what would you like? And the pig said, I'll have a sherry, please. And uh, then he turned to the second pig and said, uh, what will you have? And he had a port. And the third pig had a brandy. The fourth pig a whiskey. All short drinks, I noticed. And then it came to the turn of the, the fifth pig, tiny little chap, so much so that the barman had to sort of lean over the bar down to him. And he said, uh, Well, young man, and uh, what would you like? Expecting a bottle of orange juice or something. And so the little pig said, um, I'll have two pints of stout, please. And the barman said, uh, Good gracious little chap like you couldn't possibly drink two pints of stout. And so the little pig said, uh, oh yes I could, because I'm the pig who went wee 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 all the way home. <laughs>
busy tracks are silent Have you wondered at the sight Of a little group outside the terminus Terminus By the dark deserted British Railway Depot every night don't wonder any longer, cause it's a heavy Three broken-hearted train drivers with nothing else to do but lift our weary heads to heaven above and sing for all to hear as we wipe away a tear with the corner of an old train driver's love, train driver's love. Goodbye, old trains, I will never meet again. I'll think of you until my memory fails. Drive through fog or shower at 50 miles per hour, and yet you always keep us on the rails. Now worn and scarred towards the breaker's yard, you journeyed where they issue no returns. Old oh, pal of mine, they started pulling up the line. Goodbye. Driving through the Bramma Tunnel like they came in full of hell To the river where you gather all you've got All the sights of sparks are flying All the hitting of the steam Oh, the scent of iron brake blocks running hot From Shoreham out to Partridge Green From Enfield on to Christ's to steady market running once a week Down and hill or round a bend We could drive from either end And we never knew which end We loved the best We loved the best Goodbye, old friend when the schoolboy set a strain, you patiently endure your heavy load. Wheresoever the signals led, be they amber, green, or red, you took us down the middle of that road. The BTC has signed your RIP, and here we mourn your passing down the line. Until someday we drive you through the Milky Way Goodbye, old train They won't get us to drive their money most of us Have you ever been? 
Lynn to Monty and his sweet I with Blonde, you remember, Aunt May, wasn't she a yell? She's the one who used to say, look just like your dapple grey. Whatever happened to that horse, dear? Whoa. Oh, remember our last ride here when you had that lovely idea and I got home with my job for so did you? Wasn't Danny furious? And yet, you know, it's curious. I've never felt ashamed of it, have you? Well, really, there's no need to. I've just never paid much heed to the conventions or the penalties incurred. So you mustn't say you're sorry for that evening in the quarry. No, please, my dear, don't say another word. Oh, Peter, 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 my last book. My mother to me to try to sweet her, don't you think? Of course you do. Remember when we parted, weren't you simply broken hearted? Well, naturally you were, my dear, me too. I oh, remember telling mother we were made for one another. She didn't believe a stitch, but it's true. And you're still my favorite, Flame. I don't suppose you feel the same, or do you? Peter, there you do. So that's the thought you carried. Do you mean you never married? You didn't, Peter, darling, nor did I. I just saved myself for you again, and I felt I wanted to. You know, Peter, darling, Peter, please don't cry. No more need for tears and sorrow. She's not marry you tomorrow. Is that a right note? May the 23rd. No, please, don't, please don't thank me. Just let me find my hanky. No, please, my dear, I don't say another word. Oh, Peter, 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 my life couldn't be completer. Let's start making plans to be right away. If you want a quiet wedding, I will see about some bedding. Or could we stay a while without him there? No, straight after the marriage, we can catch the train to Harwich and we'll stay with Mummy for a month or two. Well, you needn't look like that. Mummy's got a lovely flat. And I'm sure she's always most polite to you. Very different from your mother and your nasty little brother. You've got very little room with sneer and spot. I won't sit here like a dummy while you can for Mummy and sit like that. Right? Oh, no. <laughs> trouble in the factory. Yes, I suppose you could call it that, Mr. Pipps. Well, what in heaven's name is it all about? Well, I don't know exactly how to put it. Come now, Wills. I've got to know what it is before I can do something about it. Well, Mr. Pipps, it, it's simply a matter that the men have... they seem to have taken a turn against some of the products. <laughs> taken a turn? I don't seem to like them much anymore. <laughs> don't like them? But we've got the reputation of having the finest machine part turnover in the country. The men are the best paid in the industry. We've got the cheapest canteen in Yorkshire. No two menus are alike. We've got a billiard hall, haven't we, on the premises? And a swimming pool for the use of the staff. And what about the long playing record room? And you <coughs> tell me they're dissatisfied. Oh, the men are very grateful for all the amenities, sir. It's just they don't like the products. But they're beautiful products. I've been in the industry a lifetime and I've never seen such beautiful products. There it is, sir. Which one don't they like? Well, there's the brass petcock, for instance. The brass petcock? But what's the matter with the brass petcock? They don't seem to like it. What don't they like about it? Perhaps it's just the shape. The brass petcock? 
But it's perfection. I tell you, it's absolute perfection. Don't want any more to do with it. Right. Have a go. It's not only the brass pet cock, Mr. Bibbs. What else? The DME Unibull spherical rod end. <laughs> the heavy Unibull spherical rod end? But, but where could you find a finer rod end? There are rod ends and rod ends, Mr. Bibbs. I know there are rod ends and rod ends, but where could you find a finer hemi unibull spherical rod end? I don't want any more to do with it. <laughs> this is shattering. Absolutely shattering. <coughs> well, now, Will, what else? Come, you can tell me. I'd like to say it, sir, but... The men have gone very vicious about the high speed taper shank spiral flute rhythms. <laughs> the high speed taper shank spiral flute rhythms? This is ridiculous. What could they possibly have against the high speed taper shank spiral flute rhythms? Well, all I can say, they're in a very bad state of agitation about them. And then there's a gun metal side outlet relief with a hand wheel. What? There's a nipple connector and the nipple adapter and the vertical mechanical comparator. No. And if there's one thing they can't speak about without trembling, it's the jaw for Jacob's chuck for use on a portable drill. My own Jacob's chuck. <sighs> Not my own Jacob's chuck. They're just taking a turn against the old lot of them, I tell you. Yes, male elbow adapters, tubing nuts, grub screws, internal fan washers, dog points, half dog points, white metal bushes. But not... Surely not. Not my lovely parallel male stud coupling. I, I tend to test your lovely parallel male stud couplings and back nuts and front nuts and the bronze dwarf cock with hand wheel and the bronze dwarf cock without hand wheel. <laughs> not the bronze dwarf cock with hand wheel. And without hand wheel. Without hand wheel? And with hand not wheel. Not with hand and wheel. Without, hand, without wheel. hand wheel. With hand wheel. With or without hand wheel. With or without hand wheel. wheel. Well, what, what do they want to make? Brandy balls. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
was redundant and my face was frightfully. People said he tried to last weekend, but no, sir. In attempting in a narrative, I felt one of the fallacies with the paint me sticking halfway through a mangle. Though it wasn't very dignified, I'm told the whole thing's dignified. The rape of who creeps from a modern angle. In the background stood a herd of cows, which made the most unheard of room. For their others, pardon me, were painted tops. I had one eye which looked horrid in the centre of me folly. Critics said he saw my eye in Becky Martin. <laughs> so, the title, the title of the painting, it was called The Client of Indemnity. And chronic alcoholic all in edge. They took one look and promptly signed the plea. But no such things make you blink and you think that they think they are off, off, off. If you don't understand things you can, then your plan is to talk, talk, talk. Art is not meant to please. To make people think, hence triangular truths, and not green at all, but pink. You may think that they're hell, but they sell very well. So Busier earlier. Huh? Round about ten. About ten, was it? About ten. I passed by here about then. Oh, yes. I noticed you was doing a bit of a trade. Yes, trade was very brisk here about ten. Yes, I noticed. I sold my last one about then. Went about nine forty five. Sold your last then, did you? Yes. Yes, my last evening news it was. Went about twenty to ten. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sometimes it's the star is last to go.
for the uh, what's his name? Standard. Yeah. <laughs> well, I left tonight with the evening news. <laughs> Then that went, did it? Yeah. <laughs> like a shot. <laughs> you didn't have any left then, eh? <laughs> Not after I sold that one, no. Why, it must have been after that you came by here then. Yes, I passed by here about then, after I packed up, see. You didn't stop though, did you? When? I mean, you didn't stop for a cup of tea then, did you? What, about ten? Yes. No. No, I thought I didn't see you. No, I went up to Victoria. I had to go up to Victoria. Yes. Came very brisk here about then. I went to see if I could get hold of George. Who? George. <laughs> George who? George, what's his name? Oh. <laughs> He's not about much now, is he? No. <laughs> when did you last see him then? Oh, I haven't seen him for years. How oh, nor me. <laughs> he used to suffer very bad from arthritis. Arthritis? Yeah. He never suffered from no arthritis. Oh, he suffered very bad. <coughs> Not when I knew him. Oh, I think he must have left the area. Yes, it was the evening news was last to go tonight. Not always the last time, is it, though? No. Oh, no. Sometimes it's the evening news. Sometimes it's one of the others. No way of telling beforehand. Till you've got your last one left, of course, then you know which one it's going to be. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> I think he must have left the area. <laughs> <laughs> And gentlemen, how glad I am to welcome you here this evening to listen to our most distinguished speaker. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Professor Carsters, of course, is very well known for his recent broadcast on the influence of sex in moulding our society. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tonight, he has chosen to talk about the very controversial subject of 
extramarital sex relationship. Professor Carlson. Yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure. <laughs> There you are, Mrs. Brandywine. Oh, good morning. How are your handles? Fit the hand, do they, more or less? Yes. Yes, I should say they do, and hope. Good. What do they like to look at? To what? When you look at them, do they give you any particular feeling? Revulsion, contempt, anything of that sort? Nausea? Not in the ordinary way, no. I can't say they do. Mm. You see, handles are funny things, Mrs. Brandywine. You don't mind if I come in a moment, do you? You see, these aren't my outdoor shoes that I've got on, and the sooner I get inside... Of course not. Come in. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mrs. Brandywine. A cup of tea would be very welcome if you could manage it. Yes, I've got one outside. Nearly four hours since I had anything. Hot or cold? Depends entirely on the temperature, Mrs. Brandywine. <laughs> I've been looking at your handles, Mrs. Brandywine. Oh, do you like them? Oh, very nice. A present from someone, I expect. Oh, no, not really. Oh, keepsake, perhaps, eh? Former lover, childhood sweetheart. Good gracious, no. There's no secret about those. Oh? They were there when we came. But how did they get there, Mrs. Brandywine? Two handles on each door, one on either side. They didn't come there by accident. I've never really thought about it, to tell you the truth. I'm asking you to think about it now, Mrs. Brandywine. Unless the builder put them there. I see. For some reason. What else was he responsible for? What else? The builder, besides the handles. Oh, well, everything, really. Oh, yes, he was very good. I see. He made all the arrangements. I didn't have to do a thing. Doors, windows, ceilings. Took complete charge, in other words. Yes, I left it entirely to him, I'm afraid. Chimneys? Chimneys, roof, drains. I wouldn't have known where to begin. You were reasonably satisfied, were you, on the whole? Oh, very much so. And plumbing? Oh, yes. No snags there? Oh, no. Oh, well, we had pipes for the water, and outlets, and a bath upstairs, and, well, everything, really. Right down to the washers on the tap. And plugs for the wash basins. He seems to have thought of everything. Well, quite honestly, I should have been lost without him. Mm. What did he charge you? I really can't remember now. I expect he put a bit on the bill, but whatever it was, I didn't begrudge a penny. I'm sure you didn't, Mrs. Brandywine. How far can you see through these windows? Well, it, it depends, really. Right through, usually. <laughs> <laughs> and what are these? Shelves? Well, some are shelves and, and some are ledges. Getting proper support from them? Well, I can't complain. I'm not asking you to complain, Mrs. Brandywine. Well, I'm more than satisfied with them, actually. Recesses go back far enough. Just right, really. Not too deep. Oh, no. Nice upright walls. Yes, they're very vertical. <laughs> I don't see the floor anywhere. It's under the carpet. <laughs> Making full use of it, I hope. Well, it's just so that we have something to walk about on, really. What length are your floorboards? I guess a tape measure. <laughs> Wallpaper. It seems to be missing. We've had it all pushed back against the walls. <laughs> Why have you done that, Mrs. Brandywine? It gives us more space. In the middle. Place. In case we have people in. Well, what sort of people? Well, I can tell you better when they've been, really. Oh, you hardly told me now, Mr. Brandywine. Well, people vary, sir. Well, if you give me a rough idea. Well, Friends uh, of the family, total strangers, horsemen of the apocalypse. Well, it's, it's hard to say. 
some of them might be. And the others? I'd only be guessing. Laundry workers, perhaps? Well, I really couldn't say until I'd seen them. Hmm. Where are your cullenders? One in the kitchen. Plenty of holes? Oh, yes. Any amount. Any amount? It's chock a block with holes. <laughs> I, I don't know what to do with them sometimes. <laughs> I'm falling over them. There's just too many of them. You don't need all that many. You don't There's no room for anything else. You don't know the exact number? Not offhand. I'm afraid I don't. Sieves all letting the small stuff through? So far, touch wood. Oh, pretty. Do you like it? Attractive colours. It's a tea cosy. Did you knit it, Mrs. Brandywine? Well, I did, and I didn't really. Had an accomplice, very likely. No, I wouldn't call it that exactly. Why not, Mrs. Brandywine? Well, unless you call Mrs. Prebble an accomplice. Well, what's wrong with calling her Mrs. Prebble? Oh. It's her name, presumably. Yes, oh yes. <laughs> Not an alias or anything of that sort. Oh no, no, it's her proper name. She married a Mr. Prebble. <laughs> then why are you asking me to call her an accomplice? Oh, it's just that she helped me with the tea cosy. Oh? She held the needles and I looked after the wool. <laughs> I see. We were um, in it together, as you might say. <laughs> In other words, you were just as much an accomplice as she was. Oh, if you put it like that, I suppose I was. Not very sure of yourself, are you, Mrs. Brandywine? Oh. Some of your answers could be a little more pat. You should try to get a lot more glibness into your whole approach. Hello, this is new. It's my husband. Uh. Everything functioning? Oh, yes. <laughs> Except his hormones. I've tried everything. Well, what does he weigh? Naked. Dressed. Eleven stone twelve. Mm, the chair's taking most of that. He manages on what's left. <laughs> Is he serving any useful purpose sitting there? Only to keep the floorboards in position. <laughs> there are nails for that, Mrs. Brandywine. You can dispense with one or the other. You don't need both. What are his kidneys like? He never lets me see them. <laughs> well, you could wait till he's gone out. I don't like to rummage behind his back. <laughs> it's in his own interests, Mrs. Brandywine. You haven't drunk your tea. Oh, I prefer to see it in the cup. I'll be in touch with you, Mrs. Brandywine, if anything comes through. Relative? He didn't say. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm not. 
I'm writing out a rather vulgar rhyme. In this deed, all tucked away, are the works of Rabelais, which is why I glance at it from time to time. And sometimes you will catch me taking surreptitious looks. I'm reading all the dirty bits in all the statute books. I know it's reprehensible, but my defence is short. I find it more amusing than what goes on in the court. For I never get the interesting cases. And by interesting, you know what I mean. Other judges deal in vice and crimes that aren't considered nice, but I get the kind that's heard, but not obscene. Other judges get vivacious over all the sweet, salacious little details of the cases of the day. But pity us poor benchers, who get nothing more licentious than the wrong sort of disputed right of way. It makes me simply furious that cases known as curious don't seem to be requiring my decree. I should love a case so juicy. It embarrasses the QC. But they never give a juicy case to me. Why I never get the interesting cases is something I shall never understand. I know two things about divorce, and both of them are rather coarse, and both I had to learn at second hand. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Justice Lavery gets cases of white slavery. Lord Croom gets choir masters who default. And Mr. Justice Rattery gets lovely bits of battery and tasty little pinches of assault. <laughs> But my court's always empty. You can't tempt the visitors when the only soliciting's done by solicitors. <laughs> Although I'd love to hammer a decision out in camera with photographs parked up for me to see. I'm sure I could be trusted to be properly disgusting. But they never give a juicy case to me. Why I never get the interesting cases is something I shall never understand. The people I get in my dock just never seem to run amok and hardly ever change their sex at all. Why should the others get all of the prizes? I'm sick to death of these bloody assizes. Such unfair discrimination has produced such desperation that although it's not judicious, I'll agree. Every dog must have his one day. I'll be in the papers someday. But there's going to be a juicy case, you'll see. Ah, the Miss Fortescue, <coughs> will you go to my chambers? There's something I wish to discuss with you. Yes. There's going to be a juicy case. It's me! <laughs> <laughs> Get hold of an entirely new French play. 
But unlike other more obvious functions, they're not having it translated into English. So the play will be performed in the original French with English subtitles. Les and gentlemen. Les amants. Les amants. Ah, Georges. Georges est enfin tué là. Je t'embrasse tes cheveux, tes oreilles, tes yeux, tes yeux, ton nez, ta bouche, tes bras, oh, pardon, tes bras, tes mains, tes genoux, tes pieds. Enfin, je t'embrasse et je dis bonsoir, bonsoir, bonsoir. Oh, bonsoir. Enfin, je suis là. Tu embrasses mes cheveux. Tu embrasses mes oreilles, mes joues, mes yeux, mon nez, ma bouche, mes bras. Mes mains, mes genoux et mes pieds. Oh, enfin tu m'embrasses. Et je te dis bonsoir, bonsoir, bonsoir. Bonsoir. Qu'on se couche. Venez. Couchez avec moi. Venez. 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 Come on, sir. 
But when every time I've crossed it, I believe the words are costed. And if that's the common touch here, far from what? Now do help yourself. These are crafts and these are sort of parte. I realize that modern youth, of course, must have its fling. But they ruin the rhododendrons with the flings they flung last spring. <laughs> and the shortcuts of the vicars that I very often take, my dear. French films aren't in it. Try some for this walnut cake. I've written to the council. Well, I know the town clerk's wife. I've pointed out I don't pay rates. To learn the facts of life. The things one stumbles over when the fog, perhaps, is dense. And they've carved the most suggestive statements on my garden fence. <laughs> I'm thankful Henry never lived to see the things I've seen, for my hubby, quoting Shakespeare, nothing commonly or me. Expressions that one hears, dear, well, poor Daniel's been quite ill. One might as well another touch reside on Putney Hill. When I hark back to my courting days, I said to Mrs. Smethers, I'll fresco, I'd have sooner died. And they do it in all weathers. I'd rather say a very common common. I'm not a snob. I've no use here for class. But on one thing I'm emphatic, I can see them from the apple. They can't even read. Well, not to keep off the grass. It's a beastly, common or garden kind of common. It's one couple with a candle. Homemade fudge. I say, look, I hate to trouble you, but this is, you know, SW. It's not Mon March. My dear, they never budge. It's a common, 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 common. <coughs> My back gate leads straight out. Now it's locked. But before, with no big pardon, they were in there. In my garden. Any fairy but its bottom would be shocked. <laughs> <laughs> There's one very common person on the common. Quite good looking, quite well spoken in a sense. He's become great friends with Danny. But last night, he calls me Fanny. So you're leaving? Leaving? Use your common sense. <laughs>